My guest tonight makes history everywhere she goes. I need to pull up my fingers to count this right here. First woman of color to have a leading role in Star Wars, okay? First Asian woman to be on the cover of Vanity Fair. You think I'm done? I'm not done. Come back here. I have one more, okay? And now the first ever Southeast Asian Disney princess. Please give it up for the revolutionary Kelly Marie Tran. What up? What up? How are you? Good. How are you? I'm doing so well. I'm so excited to be here. I'm such a big fan of you and I'm just stoked. <laughs> Thank you. I'm so excited you're here too. I feel like I want to ask you all of the questions. So I'm just going to dive in here. Besides making history, what have you been doing during quarantine? Oh my goodness. I feel like I've picked up so many hobbies. I, I've been painting and coloring, but I've also been taking these Vietnamese classes, uh, which I'm stoked about. And I think my parents are stoked about because I, I obviously want to just get better at everything. And, uh, yeah, it's crazy. It's, they're every Saturday, and I've missed the last three Saturdays because of this whole press tour. And I think they just think I'm a bad student now because they I go by a different name and they have no idea about my real job. <laughs> wait, wait, I love this. So your name is not Kelly Marie Tran, though. You're just like a random name, and you're lurking yeah. in the class, and people don't know yeah. that they're in the class with you. Fully, fully, yeah. It's a totally different name, and uh, I really think they just think I'm a bad student bad student because I've just been like oh I've had work and they're like sure she's working on a Saturday <laughs> <laughs> who does this girl think she is what is she in Hollywood yeah. working on a that I love that yeah. so much <laughs> Kelly you've broken so many barriers and I want to ask you and this is just like honestly for my own benefit just to have a deep conversation with you do you ever have imposter syndrome do you ever have those feelings uh, absolutely. Uh, yeah, it's. I, I mean, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this too, because you are also someone who is doing the first of so many things. You know, I feel like whenever it is the first, there's this sort of pressure of feeling like you have to live up to something, or feeling like you have to prove yourself for like an entire group of people. And there's also for me, I think the thing that actually makes it worth it is me remembering that at the end of the day, being the first is really cool. But what's what's more important to me is making sure that I'm not the last whatever that thing is. Absolutely. You know? And I love that you say this because, and I don't know if you can relate, I felt like when I felt so many pressures about being the first and all these headlines, for a moment I felt guilty almost caring about my needs. Yeah, dude. I, okay, I relate to this so hard. I think there is this dangerous thing that happens with specifically women, maybe specifically women of color, and specifically with being the first. It's this idea that is so dangerous that you have to be grateful for every single thing, right? And it, it, it is it is um, paralyzing because suddenly there have been instances, I think, in my career, in my experience, where I feel like people have used that narrative of you have to be grateful all the time to maybe take advantage of me or mm -hmm. to silence me. Because if you are being grateful all the time, then suddenly that means you can't advocate for yourself. I was gonna say, you literally just hugged my soul. My soul just got hugged by your words, <laughs> truly, because I'm a big believer of gratitude. I think in general, being grateful is very important. Yeah. However, mm -hmm. as a human, sometimes there's moments where you have to be like, you know what? No, like this feels wrong and I feel mm -hmm. disrespected and I don't feel like I'm being appreciated. And in those moments when you are seeing something wrong and how someone is treating you, for people to say, you just gotta be grateful, it's basically like saying, you need to be thankful to be here and, and thus give people permission to treat you poorly. And that's not right. Yeah. That is not right that's at all. Right. So it I, is so dangerous. Yeah. I feel like crying. <laughs> am I going to cry? Maybe. I don't know. I'm like, am I, did, I just so connect to what you're saying. Thank you for sharing that. So vulnerable. Um, so yeah. I got to ask you this. Your first role, and correct me if I have my facts wrong, but I don't think I do. Your first role was Star Wars Episode Eight. Yeah, a big change for me. Yeah, for a, sure. big, a big first major role, for, for sure. Was your family stoked about, were they huge fans of Star Wars? Were they stoked? Like, did they try to get scripts from you? How did that go down? It's funny because I had to keep the secret that I was in Star Wars for like four months or so. Mm. And I remember going home for Christmas that year. I was already casting the movie. I'd already been to London and like done some of the training and that kind of stuff. And I remember that was when episode seven was coming out. So I wasn't in that one, but it was the movie before the one that I was in. And I was like, dad, we gotta go see this movie. And he was like, oh, I hate sci-fi. I hate those fantasy movies. I'm not gonna go see that. <laughs> and it was so funny. And to this day, like my parents at the premiere of episode eight, they were both like, so do we have to know anything going into this? Like, we don't really know what this movie's about. <laughs> and it's just hilarious. <laughs> Kelly, I wanna ask you this. When Once you got into the public eye, you made a very public decision to step away from social media. And that's a pretty big deal when you're in this industry, because I feel like, 
people almost expect people to be on social media. They expect to be able to connect. What led to that decision to say, I'm not doing this anymore? Gosh, I mean, the decision for me was really about my own mental health and recognizing that I can still be in this world and I can still give parts of myself, but having healthy boundaries and recognizing what's healthy for me is the only way I can uh, make sure that I'm in a place where I can continue to do this sort of work and continue to find myself being vulnerable in, in ways that I think I, I want to as an artist. Mm -hmm. um, but for me, leaving social media, honestly, was one of the best things I ever did. I'm just so much happier. And uh, yeah, I, I'm really proud of myself for doing something that I think my agents really disagreed with at the time. <laughs> oh, I love that. I want to talk about your red carpet looks because girl, I have a picture. Let's show the picture real quick. We need to get into this. <laughs> All right, this is the first one. I'm guessing from Star Wars red carpet. Okay, you are matching the step and repeat. You are matching the carpet. <laughs> it's a whole vibe. Um, I wanna show a second one here. We are the jungle. We are nature right here. We are one with mother. I am, She is mother nature. Hit me with the third one. Once again, matching the carpet, matching the step and repeat. I'm starting to believe this is not a coincidence. This is fully planned out. Kelly, talk to me. How do you pick your red carpet looks? Because I'm utterly shook. Uh, well, I will say that I just have some of the best team in the world. Uh, Wave and Micah, who, who are my salary team, are just so incredible. And something that I, that was really important to me sort of moving forward, I think from the episode nine uh, press tour moving forward, was that I really wanted to spotlight Asian designers. That's one of the one of the ways that I've been able to sort of find my voice and, and find my own path in this. And I'm really grateful to have been able to spotlight because all those dresses are amazing. That's so great. <laughs> and you know what? You're actually so inspiring for me right now because while you're saying this, in my mind, I'm thinking, and if I'm going to be so vulnerable and honest right now, in my mind, yeah. I'm thinking, oh, I would love to ha be able to say, oh, I'm only rocking, you know, Indian designers. But then the voice in the back of my head is like, Oh, but then people are gonna say you keep talking about being Indian and you keep being Indian too much. Like that voice is in my head already telling me what people are gonna say if I do that, which is like part of the struggle. Like why it's shouldn't I be it. able to do that? Why is it, if we reverse it on the other end, like why is it normal for people to always be wearing specifically white designers and there's no conversation around that? Like why do we have to worry? You know, it's, yeah. Anyway, I relate, <sighs> I hear you. <laughs> This, oh my, I adore you. I adore you so much. Um, <laughs> you know what I did last night? Can I tell you what I did last what? night? What? Tell me, I tell me. I finished work, I went home, I said, no one was in my house, but I said, nobody text me, nobody do nothing. I'm about to watch Ryan the Last Dragon, phone on silent, and can I tell you, I cried, I laughed, I immediately went on the internet and tried to buy a real dragon. I did all of those things, okay? <laughs> And what, it was, it's incredible. The film's incredible. What was it like stepping into that role? Were you nervous at all? Were you excited? Absolutely all of the above. I feel like I felt so many emotions. Um, these specific movies, like these Disney princess movies, hold so much legacy with them. And to be part of this movie that has that, but also is broadening the narrative in terms of like, what do we think when we think of the word princess? What do we think when we think of the word hero? We are really changing um, I think instinctually what that image looks like and what that person speaks like. And to be able to be part of that feels amazing. I'm so glad you liked it. I'm so glad you, you watched it. <laughs> yeah. I'm not even lying. So I made a rule for myself this season. I said, I'm always going to watch the things and read the things that I'm not going to sit on this couch and just fluff and be like, I really loved, um, Tommy, no, sorry, Raya, and the, uh, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> I'm going to actually know the things. And so yeah. I, I'm, it just made the experience so much better because it was unlike anything I've seen. It was so colorful, so magical, so just full of culture and beauty. Kelly, you do the voiceover for this at home, right? Yeah. What's that experience yeah. like in your house doing, doing VO? It was wild. I mean, it, it was also like, because of COVID and everything, we had to essentially build a makeshift VO booth. So we like taped sound blankets to the wall. We took a bunch of furniture and like put it in a, a weird rectangular shape for sound insulation. And that was our very glamorous VO booth for this big <laughs> Disney princess movie. Um, it was such a wild experience because there were moments where, I mean, we were talking about these like huge battle scenes. My character is fully wielding a sword and making all these grunting noises and like screaming like, no. And I was doing this 
in my boyfriend's apartment and just hear like just hearing how loud these screams were and how loud these grunts were, I was like, my neighbors think I'm insane or that I'm being murdered or something. <laughs> it was wild. And that's so interesting because a lot of people at home may not know this, but when you're doing an animated film, you do something called efforts, which is exactly what this is. Sounds that will help your character when they're falling, when they're tired. And so literally it's a series of like, okay, Kelly, um, give us a few just your punching. Yeah. And then it'll be like, yeah. eh, eh, eh. Yeah. <laughs> like that's literally what you're doing, right? That's exactly it. Thanks so much for watching this clip and thank you even more for supporting The Underdog. If you want to subscribe to this channel, you can click right over there. For more clips just like this one that are hilarious, you can click right over there. Hopefully, if someone did their job, those things are there. We'll see.